Hi guys, welcome to lesson 9.2, quadratic functions. Uh, our objective for the day is to be able to graph quadratic functions in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So these are going to be a little bit more complicated than yesterday. So the first thing we're going to do is looking at how do we graph these equations. And we have a pretty important uh, key concept here, which is how to find the vertex of uh, a quadratic equation. And to do this, we take, uh, to find the x-coordinate, we take the opposite of b and divide it by 2a. So for question a, the opposite of b would be... Hold on, hold on a second. Oh, okay. Our a value is a negative one. Negative one. Our b value is a four. And our c value is a negative two. Okay. Okay. So I'm looking for my x. So I plug in the opposite of b. So b is a four. We take the opposite. It's negative four. And I four. do two, two times whatever my a is. So negative 4 over negative 2 reduces to a positive 2. Well, we don't really know what that is. We don't need it. So we know our x value is, our, our vertex is a positive 2. That's our x value. So now we create our table. And we're going to go, we're going to set 2 up right in the middle. And we're going to put a couple points to the left of 2 and a couple points to the right of 2. So we go 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So when we plug in 0, we're going to end up with 0, zero, zero. plus 0, minus 2 is negative 2. We need to put a 1 in. So the opposite of 1 squared is negative 1 plus 4. So negative 1 plus 4 is 3. Minus 2 is 1. Okay. The opposite of 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. The opposite is negative 4. Plus 8. Or no, plus 4 is 0. Wait. You can't do this in your head, I Mr. Bowen. I know, Bowen. I can't. So, negative 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 2 is... Negative 4 plus 8 minus 2. So you got 4 minus 2. Which is 2. Uh, plugging in 3, 3 squared is 9. We take the opposite of it, so it's negative 9 plus 4 times 3, which is 12. Negative 9 plus 12 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. And 4 squared is 16. We take the opposite. It's negative 16 plus 16, which is 0. Minus 2 is minus 2. Did I even have to do those last two calculations, Ms. Zerzo? No, but it's helpful. It is. Why didn't I have to do those? Because there should be symmetry. Mm -hmm. Now we know our whole entire vertex. And everything is symmetrical. So over 0, down 2, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 2. I have to figure out where my 2 is. There's my axis. Over 3, up 1, over 4, down 2. Now, if you're using your calculator to type these in, be very careful with your negative signs, especially when you're squaring them. We have been harping on this all year, and now it is that much more important. All right, we can see we had at uh, 2, 2 was our maximum on this graph. And if we were to draw a dotted line down that x equals 2, we'll see that this graph is a perfect mirror of itself on either side of that line. 
Well, if I would have drawn it better. That looks better. Okay. Oh. So Ooh. step one, you have to use your vertex. So B is negative six and C is two and A is one. The opposite of negative six over two times A. The opposite of negative six? Positive six over two, which reduces to three. Now, step two, that three goes in the middle of ours. Mm-hmm. Why'd you do that? So I just made a mirror. Well, that's gonna mess me up. So we go two points to the left, two points to the right. Put in a one, one squared is one, minus six plus two, negative five plus two, how about negative three? Okay, plug in two, two squared is four, minus 12 plus two. Negative eight plus two. Negative six. Plug in three. Three squared is nine. Minus 18 plus two is negative seven. Four squared is 16 minus 24 plus two is negative six. Five squared is 25. And yeah, negative three. Over one, one, two. We've got positive one. Got it. Negative three. Positive two, negative six. Positive three, negative seven. Positive four, negative six. We can see that we have a minimum and positive five, negative three. We have a minimum. Our line of symmetry goes through the line x equals three. And they are mirrored on either side. For problem number two, we're going to be working on applying these models. And for this model, we have uh, when something's just being dropped, we use negative 16t squared plus c, where c was the height. Uh, but this time, we're launching an object into the air and then gravity is just pulling it back down. So we need to use the equation h equals negative 16t squared plus vt plus c, where v is its upward velocity. And once we launch it, it doesn't have any more, um, it doesn't have any more forces acting on it other than gravity. So we have our equation, negative 16t squared, in our word problem, we're launching a t-shirt with one of those uh, giant slingshots, uh, and it's going up at 72 feet per second. And somebody catches the t-shirt 35 feet above the court. We'll see if that's important. Uh, we want to know how long is it going to take the t-shirt to reach its maximum height? And what is that maximum height? So we're going to be looking for that vertex. and. Uh, we're just going to try to see what we've got from it, and we want to know what the range is. All right, so uh, we've got negative 16t squared plus 72t plus 5, because we can see from the picture that we are launching this t-shirt from 5 feet off the ground. So to find our vertex, we take the opposite of B over two times A. Go off screen. 
So our A is negative 16, our B is 72, and our C is 5. So we've got seven, negative 72 over negative, uh, or 2 times negative 16. which is negative 32. And when you divide that, you're going to get 2.25 seconds. So that answers the first part of the question that we asked, which is how long will it take for it to hit its vertex, to the, hit that maximum height, 2.25 seconds. Now, in order to find what that's going to be, what is that maximum height, you need to plug in 2.25 for t in our equation. Use your calculator for this. And when you type it all in, you're going to get that it is 86 feet off the court. So the question is, uh, the final question is, what is our range for this uh, projectile, this, this object that's launched, this t-shirt? And we know that it's going to be between 5 feet and 86 feet. So the height is going to be between 5 feet and 86 feet, and the person caught it at uh, 35. All right, so our second question is going to ask us, suppose the t-shirt is launched with an upward velocity of, negative, or of 64 feet per second instead, and it's still caught 35 feet above the court. We want to know how long is it going to take to get to that maximum height and how high that is going to be. So we start again with our formula opposite of b over 2a. So we can take negative 64 over negative 32. And when we do the division on this, we're going to find that it's going to take two seconds for it to reach that maximum height. We plug that back in for t in our original equation. And we find that after two seconds, it is 69 feet above the ground. So our range for this t-shirt is going to be between 69 feet and 5 feet. All right. Our last problem for the day, Daniel is kicking a soccer ball up into the air with an initial upward velocity of 64 feet per second. The ball is two feet above the ground when it is kicked, and we want to know how long is it going to take it to reach its maximum height, and how high will that be? So we plug these two pieces of information in. We've got negative 16t squared plus 64t plus 2. So the opposite of b is negative 64 over 2 times negative 16, which is negative 32. And again, we're going to find this is two seconds into the air. We plug that into our equation, and we're going to get an output of 66 feet. So our uh, coordinates for the, our range of this one is uh, between 66 feet and 2 feet. All right. That is our lesson for the day. We will see you in class tomorrow.